and we hate to start it, but we're gonna feed our first bale of hay today. The drought, which was late getting here, has uh, sure wreaked havoc on our pastures. So let's get to work. This huge track hoe is the biggest one we could get delivered out in this area. These arms, when it's fully extended, will go out a little over 40 feet. I still don't think it, from both sides, it'll get to the very center of the pond, but it'll get most of it. We've owned this farm for almost 40 years. We've never had it cleaned out. It's a huge pond surface area wise, but over the years, and I'm guessing it's been here 60, 70 years, it is filled in with sediment. You can see there's just little islands formed everywhere. It's awfully muddy. I worry about a cow or calf getting stuck in it. And so this is the lowest we've ever seen it in these 40 years. Now you might say, well, how can that be? We've had so much rain earlier in the summer. And that's true, but we didn't have any runoff rain. Every bit of it soaked in, kept the grass growing great. Uh, but it didn't create any runoff to put water in the pond. And as a result, that's why it's so low. But hopefully a week from now, uh, you'll see a big difference in probably not the water because we need, we're gonna have to have a rain to fill it, but to get all this sediment cleaned out, it's gonna be quite a chore. But we got a boy here big enough to do it, as you can see. Louie is not riding back with us tonight. He's already got in that muddy pond. <laughs> and just absolutely filthy. Get to try out my new loading area this morning, courtesy of the neighbor's cow and calf that was over in her field. Got them in the corral, they're on their way. We'll get to see if this loadout area works good or not. I would hate to guess at how many hundreds of tons of mud and sediment was removed over the course of three long days with this machine operating. This is a job that is needed to have been done for the past several years but the drought this year has made this the most opportune time.
These tarps we're gonna put on today, now that's not Gangnam style, that's Temple Grandin style. And I'm gonna attach this tarp with heavy duty uh, zip ties here. I'm putting the main part of the tarp on the back side of the panel because most of the time cattle are gonna be over here. I don't want them chewing on the tarp. And then when I open it up to run them down the alley, they're not gonna be against it hopefully very much, very, very long anyway. If I was a calf and I was in this little enclosed area here with black tarps all around and this was the only opening, I think that's the way I would go. I hope it works. Sale day is less than a week away, so we continue the process of baiting the cattle to certain spots in the field with range cubes to make it easier for the cowboys to catch them next week. These calves have certainly gained well these past seven or eight months, but it's just about time for them to go to market. We always look forward to that. landscape of this old pond sure looks different after being cleaned out for the first time in over a half century. take some effort as well as some patience to get these cattle captured into the right location but we eventually make it. Down here at the creek place, I've always got to capture the cows and calves in this smaller area, about a 10 acre uh, opening, before the cowboys come. Because if they go to the woods over here, that's about 80 acres, nah, 60 or 80 acres of dense woods that the cowboys can't get their horses through to get them out. So a few days before they come, I always try to get them caught in this smaller area. I think we've got them all, but we've got to go count the cows and make sure. We've counted the cows five times now, and we've got the right number, so we're pretty sure we've got them all collected for the cowboys together Monday morning. So now, let's call it a day. 